Ina mani pārtu se vēdīgi īt spēdētu sāngtī. Amen. Uh, so today, um, although it's first Saturday, it's a feast of our, um, the, the, the usual feast of Our Lady, um, but I would like to talk about the angels. Um, tomorrow is the feast of the holy guardian angels, and indeed all angels. Just this past Thursday was the feast of St. Michael the Archangel. Um, and it's fitting, right? It's fitting on Our Lady's feast day, uh, who is queen of the angels, to talk about those uh, uh, subjects of hers. Uh, and so, you know, and they are so important, um, as always, but these days especially, uh, the, the church and humanity in general has forgotten how important and how involved angels are in our lives. You know, people talk about parallel dimensions and alternate universes and all this kind of stuff, uh, and they don't realize how close to the truth they are. Uh, because there is a whole other world right on top of this one, and it's the angelic world, the world of the spirits and the angels. They're very involved in this world and in our lives, I would say far more, probably 10 times more than you realize. Everybody knows, right? We all should know that we have a guardian angel. Everybody knows that. Uh, but not everybody knows that there are, uh, every time Mass is said, thousands of angels around the altar. There are angels guarding every church, every family, every city, every country, uh, 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 bishops, and so on. Uh, priests have extra guardian angels assigned to them. Forests and trees, lakes, rivers, planets, stars, angels are involved in everything. Right? The workings of nature, God has assigned a hierarchy and a place for all these angels. And so we're going to find out about that today. We're going to talk a little bit about the nine choirs of angels. There are three groups of three. Um, and I did, I did speak somewhat about this uh, this past Thursday for the Feast of St. Michael. So anybody who was there at that sermon, maybe uh, you'll hear a bit of a, a repetition. But repetitio est mater studiorum. Repetition is the mother of learning. Uh, so starting with, um, let's see, uh, as I mentioned, the, the guardian angels... Um, as I said, Catholic theology teaches every single person in the world has an individual guardian angel assigned to him or her alone. And uh, his job is to help us get to heaven. And our guardian angels will be there with us at our last judgment. Uh, they will plead for us if we have done well. Uh, but if we have done evil, they will stand there as um, kind of an accusing, uh, an accusatory uh, witness. Our guardian angel has seen everything. And the guardian angel sees everything we do, and he also sees everything that we haven't seen. Our angel sees the graces we squandered, the opportunities we missed. Our guardian angel <clears throat> will stand with us at the judgment seat of God and say, I gave him good inspirations his whole life, and he never listened to me. He squandered them all. Right? We don't want our angel to, to say that. Uh, we want our guardian angel to say, I was with him. I saw how hard he tried, the difficulties he overcame, the good inspirations he listened to, and so on. That's what we want our guardian angel to be able to say. Uh, and, and think of it, you, you know, you, the best friend you never knew you had uh, will be visible to, to us on the day of our death, that guardian angel. So it behooves us, listen to those good inspirations. Talk to your guardian angel, be friends with him or them, if it may be, uh, and, uh, you know, correspond, correspond to those good graces. Uh, but as I said, that's just the, the guardian angels are mostly taken from the choir of angels, and that's the lowest. The lowest category is that of the angels. Uh, next up is archangels and then uh, principalities. That's the first and the lowest level of angels. After that is the, um, the powers, virtues, and dominions. And then above that is the thrones, seraphim, and cherubim. And each of those, those three, three categories have a, a specific task to each, but a general task common to all three. Uh, now this, I, I take this from um, Dom Guéranger's The Liturgical Year, and he says this about today's entry, the, 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 the guardian angels. Um, when we look at, let's, take, let's go from the top down, the, 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 the cherubim, the seraphim, and the thrones. These three highest choirs are dedicated purely to the worship of God. They surround his throne with majesty and power, singing his praises, and their entire energy is devoted to understanding and praising God's different individual perfections. 
uh, this this uh, set of angels is not so much concerned with uh, a physical creation with mankind and so on. They are primarily concerned with the worship of God, attending upon his throne. And it's very fitting that, that God have that, that God have these perfectly pure spirits who never sinned uh, surrounding him with, with purity and innocence. And, and we, we, we often don't think about that. Like the angels, the good angels in heaven, they never sinned not even once. Um, you know, we, uh, we stand in need of redemption. We have all sinned. We need forgiveness. But none of the angels need forgiveness because they didn't do anything wrong to be forgiven for. Um, so that's something to, to, to keep in mind, that, that God is surrounded by these absolutely perfectly pure spirits, always praising him. And those are the ones that at mass, like I said, angels are surrounding the, 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 um, the altar and the priest. Um, it's those, primarily those choirs that are uh, engaged in that, the worship of God. Uh, for where God is, there heaven is also, right? The Holy, the Holy Eucharist, the whole of all of heaven is there with God. Uh, the next level down, this is where it starts to get interesting, I, well, uh, more interesting for us, I would say. The dominions, the virtues, and the powers, these are dedicated to preserving order in the universe. All right, everywhere we look around us, we see um, order and precision, astronomical precision, we could say. Uh, with the vastness of space and the, the depth and the hugeness and things like black holes and supernovas and galaxies colliding into each other. This is not random. This doesn't happen by chance. It happens by God's order and purpose. And he has assigned these certain choirs of angels to guide and govern the, those, those incredible powers of heaven. Uh, it's been said that every star, every planet has a, a guardian angel assigned to it to keep it on course. Uh, so we look up at the majesty of heaven, the infinity of the stars. And by the way, every visible star in the sky is within our own galaxy. There are trillions of galaxies, each with trillions of stars. You can't even see any of them without a telescope. Everything, every star in the sky we see is just our own galaxy. And that represents the vastness of what God has created. In fact, it's been said that the uh, visible physical universe represents less than 1% of God's actual creation, which means the angelic world is 99% is of what God created. We have no idea the vastness of the angels. Uh, but everything, everything God has created, all of those, those, those the, the natural law, the physics of the universe and so on, guardian angels are helping to guide it. And not just out there in space, right? The stars, the sun, and the moon. Um, uh, it, that's mo mostly the, uh, the dominions. The virtues of heaven, the next choir, these are very much involved in the things of nature here on earth. The cycle of our seasons, spring and summer, the migration of animals, even the growth and flourishing of plants is assisted by the mighty intellect of the angels. Uh, the church father Origen says, the ministries of earth, the many departments of nature are allotted to the heavenly virtues, fountains and rivers, winds and forests, plants, living creatures of land and sea, whose various functions harmonize together by the angels directing them all to a common end. St. Ambrose says, air and earth and ocean, everything is full of angels. And this would explain to some extent uh, the old legends that we hear or fairy tales of birds or forest creatures that appear to lost travelers and will lead them out of a, a, a dark forest. Uh, we need not think that as fantasy uh, because the angel guardian of that forest can very well make use of whatever means necessary to help his charge. Um, and the angels are our friends with each other. Uh, we never need fear that our guardian angel is gonna be caught alone or unawares for they all communicate with each other and even as Christ said in the garden, I need only ask my heavenly father and he will send legions of angels to my assistance. Uh, so likewise, the angels themselves uh, can ask for assistance from their fellow angels. And so we can see, easily see that if you have a good relationship with your guardian angel, uh, that is like a whole network that you've got uh, uh, going on there, right? We don't think about that, but that is absolutely true. Um, you know, travelers, uh, uh, seafarers lost at sea, you know, people, uh, you know, trapped in rivers and so on. Uh, ask your angel guardian for assistance. They are ready and waiting to help us um, in accordance with the will of God. 
right? Even in scripture, we read that um, uh, Balaam's donkey spoke to him on the road. It wasn't Balaam's donkey. It was an angel, right, speaking through the creature. Um, And I would say, actually, at this point, as I so often do, all of the other uh, pagan false religions of the earth have reason to be jealous of the Catholic Church. So uh, um, here, when we talk about the angel guardians, pagans and Wiccans be jealous, right? Be jealous of the church. You have questions, we have answers. You grasp at fairy tales and legends, but we have the truth behind it. Uh, uh, the, the, um, those, um, what does it call it, um, environmentalists and nature lovers, and I said the, the Wiccans and the pagans who end up worshiping nature, uh, they're not wrong. They have a little bit of truth in that, but like I said, they don't understand the truth. They're lost uh, worshiping the effects of God, uh, seeing the effects of angels, not knowing who is actually behind it. And sadly, they end up worshiping demons, as uh, the scriptures say. The gods of the heathens are demons. Uh, For just as all of nature is full of angels, only some of them are good. There are fallen angels as well. And um, uh, these also serve, uh, according to God's designs, these fallen angels also uh, have a place in nature. Uh, people talk about an evil woods or, you know, some dark and, and horrible place. That can be true. And it's not that the place itself, the, the physical matter is evil, but the, the spirit infesting it is evil. And those demons can have an effect on those, those areas God gives them permission to inhabit. Uh, so it is true. Uh, um, again, uh, like, uh, again, wanderers in the woods and so on, they talk about an evil spirit. That would be true. It would be the angel, the fallen angel, inhabiting that place. Uh, and this, this brings in the function of the powers, the, 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 um, uh, the choir of powers. It is uh, to them, God is assigned to hold in check the wicked designs of the evil spirits. Uh, Even as there are angels assigned to guard us and nature, there are also demons. Satan assigns wicked tempters, not only to persons, but also to places. And uh, Satan is always pushing his boundaries, and the choir of powers keep him and his demons in their place. And we may not think about it, but there are, we could say, there are spiritual combats going on at the angelic realm. Um, (laughs) Now we get to the final choir, the principalities, archangels, and angels. And to this uh, lower choir, uh, these are dedicated to the guardianship and the friendship of mankind. As I mentioned, uh, everybody has a guardian angel, and these are taken primarily, that's the lowest choir, and this is primarily where we get, we get our guardian angels personally. Um, archangels are often assigned to guardianship of communities, such as families, churches, Uh, religious communities, provinces, dioceses, and so on. Uh, Priests and bishops may also be assigned archangels as an additional uh, guardian angel. Uh, Then the choir of principalities, as their name expresses, the the, the princeps or the princely uh, choir, they have charge of even greater communities, whole kingdoms and countries, nations, uh, whole churches, and so on. We would also think that um, cardinals, archbishops, and the pope uh, would have additional guardian angels, perhaps, from this choir. Uh, So this is not a doctrine or dogma of the church, but this is developed very early on. Uh, I think it was the church father, Father, uh, Pseudo Dionysius, wrote very much about angels. Uh, You heard me mention Origen and Ambrose as well. Uh, it was very well understood in the Middle Ages and earlier. They understood the, the, the connection between this world and the spiritual world. Uh, the the, the uh, medieval man and earlier, they looked out at this world and they saw. They saw angels. They saw demons. They saw a whole spiritual world. The whole world was alive, not just at this level, but at a higher level as well. And we've lost that. And and the sad thing is, mankind is a spiritual animal. And we know mankind, not just Catholics and Christians, mankind knows we are spiritual beings. And that is why when when the the Christian view of the world was was being attacked uh, and it was being uh, um, dismissed as superstitious, it wasn't gotten rid of, it was replaced. And we see that today 
uh, especially. What's all popular is Harry Potter and magic and the, the, the Lord of the Rings even and the occult and spirits. It hasn't gone away. It has just been replaced. And these spirits that replaced our guardian angels are not good spirits. This is not a kind of spiritual world that has replaced the other one. It is a wicked one. It is corrupt and vicious. And we're seeing that coming out more and more. Um, but uh, as, as, as I mentioned, right, there's, there's, no, there's no need to fear. There's no need to fear um, any of the, uh, the attacks of the wicked spirits for, um, you know, Satan is powerless. Uh, we see this in the lives of the de desert fathers and of the saints. It is us, we give in, we yield to the attacks of the demons, and it is we ourselves who are weak. Uh, so we ought not to fear Satan, uh, we ought to fear ourselves and our own weakness. That's primarily what we ought to fear. So don't be distressed at, at the ragings of nations or wars and rumors of wars and the satanic activity. Don't be afraid of that, right? Be afraid of your own inconsistency. But even there, even then, don't fear that either. Don't fear your own weakness. Uh, the Feast of St. Therese of Lisieux is coming up, October 3rd. Uh, and she gave her weakness to God. It was in her weakness that she was strong, that she found strength. Because as great as your sins are, as, as, as great as your weakness is, God is infinitely greater. You can't sin, uh, you can't sin any, any way that God can't forgive if you want to be forgiven. God is infinite. Even if you spent your whole life committing mortal sins every second, that would be infinitely less than what God can forgive. So no excuse, no fear, only trust in God and asking the help of your guardian angels. So uh, let us thank God for all this, giving us not just all the angels, but the queen of the angels herself, Our Lady, uh, a greater by far than any created being uh, by God's grace. He did that for her, and he wants to do the same for us, uh, each in our own degree. Uh, so let us trust in that, trust in our guardian angel, the whole network of angels around us, guiding us, guarding us, helping us, assisting us, loving us, wanting us to, to see us get to heaven, wanting us to accept God's grace. Uh, let us rely upon the power of the queen of angels, uh, Our Lady. Uh, so let us keep this in mind uh, today and always. Uh, may our guardian angels intercede for us and pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.